fictional tropes, and a large dose of conspiracy theories. Tonight I'll give some specific examples that will illustrate the bad history, worse science, media tropes, and conspiracy theories that are part of this new belief system. Bad history and archaeology, the mysterious Sumerians. In The Twelfth Planet, published in 1976, Zechariah Sitchin said of the ancient Sumerians, quote, to this day, the scholars have no inkling who these Sumerians were, where they came from, and how and why their civilization appeared, for his appearance was sudden, unexpected, and out of nowhere. So how could the Sumerian civilization have suddenly appeared? Only with the help of their extraterrestrial mentors, of course. In the third edition of his book, Ancient Iraq, published in 1992, George Rue, details the gradual increase in technological sophistication from the Neolithic to the Bronze Age and the succession of cultures represented in seven archaeological strata in southern Iraq spanning 4,000 years from 7,000 to 3,000 BCE. Thus, the appearance of the Sumerian civilization was neither sudden nor mysterious. Much of this evidence came to light comparatively recently. Sitchin may therefore be excused for his erroneous assertions to some degree, since they were based on a lack of data. However, <coughs> The Twelfth Planet was republished in 2007 without any acknowledgement of the more recent archaeological stories in southern Iraq. Bad Science The Radioactive Skeletons of Mohenjo Daro. Ancient alien theorists assert that Mohenjo-Daro, a city of the ancient Indus River civilization, was destroyed by a nuclear blast, I suppose from wars between the various extraterrestrial factions. As evidence of this, according to one website, www.beforeus.com, quote, it has been claimed that the skeletons, after, thousand, after thousands of years, are still among the most radioactive that have ever been found, on a par with those of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The telltale signs of pseudoscience are all present in this quote. These include use of the passive voice and lack of attribution. It has been claimed by whom? However, this most egregious fault is scientific illiteracy. The only material left by an atomic blast that could make skeletons radioactive is the fission product of strontium-90, which has a half-life of 28.8 years. A rule of thumb for how long a radioactive contaminant generated at a specific time remains in the environment is that after 10 half-lives, it can be considered to have completely decayed away. 10 half-lives of strontium-90 would be 288 years. Since Mohenjo Daro was abandoned in the 19th century BCE, the last of the strontium-90 from this alleged nuclear blast would have decayed away many thousands of years ago. How much strontium-90 would be in the bones of people killed in this ancient city immediately after this alleged atomic blast? The answer is very little. <clears throat> the ancient alien theorists have conflated radiation poisoning with radiation sickness. People who sicken and die from the radiation effects of an atomic blast suffer radiation sickness, the acute destruction of their fast-growing tissues by highly penetrating ionizing radiation such as gamma rays. It is characterized by hair falling out, bleeding gums, skin sloughing off, and the lining of the digestive tract breaking down, leading to vomiting, diarrhea, and acute dehydration. It does not result in the deposition of strontium-90 in the body. Radiation poisoning with strontium-90 results from the gradual accumulation of this isotope in the bones due to ingestion of foods contaminated by it. The effects of radiation poisoning by strontium-90 years after ingestion are leukemia and bone cancer. <clears throat> Myth, media, and UFO narratives. Another bit of pseudoscience is that of alien-human hybrids probably impressed on the imaginations of the scientifically illiterate by the 1983 TV miniseries V, in which reptilian aliens masquerading as humans experimentally crossbreed with earthlings to produce hybrids. Considering that animals as closely related as the horse and the ass, 
members of the same genus but different species can only produce sterile offspring, such as the mule, it would be impossible for beings from another planet and humans to produce hybrids. This trope is more one of myth and media than of science. It draws much of its imagery and narrative from myths of gods and, or angels engendering giants and heroes on mortal women. Much of the imagery of human gray alien hybrids can be tracked back to the creepy, pallid, emotionally cold, artificially engendered children of the 1960 film Village of the Damned. The gray aliens who supposedly abducted Barney and Betty Hill are probably derived from the Outer Limits episode, The Bolero Shield, which first aired on February 22, 1964. Finally, the beneficent and fully human Nordic aliens can be traced back to the character Klaatu, played by Michael Rennie in the 1951 film The Day the Earth Stood Still. Abduction by extraterrestrial aliens is a mis motif in a number of science fiction films from the 1950s, among them Invaders from Mars, 1953, This Island Earth, 1955, and The 27th Day, 1957. Alien implants, another major UFO trope, are the motif from Invaders from Mars, where the Martians control the minds of those they kidnapped by implants placed at the base of their skulls. Conspiracy theories. Conspiracy theories are another major aspect of this new belief system. And the most famous of these is the alleged crash of an extraterrestrial spacecraft near Roswell, New Mexico, in 1947. My writing partner in this book, Dr. Ronald Prothero, has a unique perspective on the Roswell incident and the mysterious goings-on in Area 51 because his father, Clifford Prothero, worked there. And after his work was declassified, told Don about it. Was there a secret the government was hiding at Groom Lake? There was indeed but it didn't involve crash UFOs. The secret of Area 51 was that it was the training testing ground, I should say, for top secret aircraft, among them the U-2 spy plane and the stealth bomber. Solutions. So is there any solution to this particular assault on reason? Happily, <clears throat> technology has inadvertently dealt what may be the death blow to new alien abduction areas in the form of the cell phone. Before its advent, there was a plausible reason for lack of much direct evidence of aliens abducting abductions taking place on lonely country roads. Now, with over 90% of Americans owning cell phones capable of taking videos, the likelihood of potential abductees taking cell phone videos of these events is really heightened. It is notable that reports of alien abductions are now much rarer than in earlier decades. <laughs> Beyond the fortuitous intervention of technology, the strategies for countering this particular form of unreason involve education. Specifically, not only science education, but education in history, particularly ancient history, and mythology. Of course, requiring class and critical thinking would also be a great help in combating pseudoscience conspiracy theories. Along with this, imbuing students with a sense of wonder at what science, and not pseudoscience, has discovered about the nature of the universe is a great counterstroke against fascination with UFO tropes. In the meantime, I think we will have to reconcile ourselves to unceasingly combating the onslaught of unreason. Donald Prothero and I hope our book contributes valuable evidence, part of the arsenal of reason in this struggle. Thank you very much. <laughs>